Hello, hello! Welcome back to Ivana's Noshk Life. Today I want to talk to you about PhD. PhD application process, PhD requirements and PhD salary in Norway. Did you know that PhD in Norway it is not a student and it is employee? I will tell a bit more details about that. I have been a PhD in Norway. So uh, I want to share some of uh, my personal insights, what is not written in the vacancies description that can help you. So let's start. Let's start with the PhD requirements. So there is uh, three main requirements that are set to PhD candidates in Norway. First of all, you need to have a master degree. This is a must-have thing. But what is not written in the vacancies, it's about what is important in this uh, master degree. So no one writes this, but actually they are looking at the candidates with the highest grades. Person who finished master degree with a master thesis graded at B or a actually, but B can be accepted. If you have C or lower, it will be a bit hard. So um, in this case, you need to propose something else to them. And we will talk about this a bit later. The second thing in the PhD requirements, it is uh, English. English needs to be at excellent level. In some positions, you will see a really requirements to ILT and uh, ILT's uh, score. Uh, for example, I found one that uh, stated that it needs to be 6.5 and uh, no sections lower than 5.5 or 12 that is 600 paper based result and so on. So please read carefully PhD vacancy and look for these PhD requirements. But in total, you need to have a good English skills because you're going to read and write a lot in English. So this is the main reason why. And the third PhD requirement, it is academic results. What it's meant by the academic results. So it is nice if you have already started publishing something that you can show them at least one article that was published. Maybe it's a result of your master study or it also could be uh, in some cases they uh, are ready to accept unpublished by written academic result. Uh, or it could be work or research related experience. This is also important if you haven't published anything, but you have a practical experience from industry, it will be valued. So you need to make an emphasis on that as well in your application. So this is the PhD requirements, the main uh, ones that I found in many different PhD vacancies available in Norway. But some uh, positions, even within the same university, some research groups, they have more strict requirements, while others have a bit um, more flexible. So make sure to check it and you can check positions for a PhD on jobnorge.no. You will find the link in the description. So this is PhD requirements and now we are moving to the PhD application process. Since I'm working as an associate professor, recent, recently I started uh, receiving a lot of emails from abroad that um, people who want to start a PhD in Norway and they work, want to work in uh, my research group, but it doesn't work like that in Norway. So in Norway, you do not contact uh, just any professor and ask them, can I be uh, your PhD student? Uh, it's a small uh, probability that you will get a job opportunity like that because in Norway every single PhD position has to be published online available to anyone in the world and then the best candidate will be chosen from, from the applied candidates. So that's why instead of targeting a professor, you would rather just uh, investigate if there is any PhD position open. If it's open, then just apply for it. That's all. No secrets at all. Um, and then in the PhD disc position description, you can find the contact people 
whom you can ask some questions. This you can do, but just I recommend you highly. Just do not write to a professor in Norway. Please take me, sir, because or ma'am, because I want to be a PhD. It's not gonna work like that. So Norwegian system is not built like this. So when we talk about application process, you will need to collect a set of the documents and submit them in uh, your. Uh, in the vacancy that you found interesting for you. I try to go through different uh, research uh, directions and different universities and try to make a kind of common list of the things that you need to have with you when you apply for a PhD. The first one, it is a CV, of course, your resume, uh, and it needs to have a three reference persons. Then you need to have a most likely, you need to submit your certified uh, copies of academic diplomas and transcripts. And if you are not from Norway, you need to have a diploma supplements as well. Uh, that uh, includes a description of the study and grading system of your university or your country. So it will be a benefit. Then uh, the next uh, section, it's uh, in different applications, it's called differently and it requires different information. It could be a short research statement uh, where you first tell your motivation of why you want to be a PhD. Then uh, you write why you are suited for this position. Uh, you need to provide a short description of the research challenges for the PhD position you are applying and which theoretical and methodological background do you have to target or to address the challenges that you named. In other words, uh, it also can be separated a bit different in other vacancies. It could be divided in two parts. First one is kind of motivation letter that you write. It includes your motivation and why you suited well for the PhD position. This is how I was applying. And then the second one, it was project proposal. In project proposal, it was um, not more than five pages where you need to describe shortly what is done in this field of study. Uh, some research questions that you think it or like some questions or research gaps that you think needs to be addressed in there and how you would address them if you were a PhD student or a PhD candidate. So this is uh, needs to be included in the project proposal. And you submit all these documents together with your certificate about English uh, in your application form. And that's all. And then you wait for their interview and uh, you will hear if you were selected or no. So this is kind of, this is it. This is the whole process of uh, becoming a PhD. Uh, in Norway, PhD, it is an employee at the university who has a salary, who pay taxes and who also uh, pay for the 2% from their salary for the pension fund um, and if you keep living in Norway as I did afterwards so you're kind of starting thinking about your pension uh, for the future so this is quite nice and the last thing that I wanted to tell you about PhD in Norway uh, it is a salary so what is the starting point and um, how it is changing over the years, because in Norway salary changes over the years. And what you need to do to make sure that you will get this change. First of all, PhD salary in Norway in 2021, the starting point is 482,200 Norwegian kroners. It's a starting point of a salary for a PhD. But also it depends if you have a work experience, um, you could have a bit higher starting point right away. But what also important to know that uh, I would recommend you after you start your PhD uh, that you actually find the union. Uh, it could be academic union, it could be uh, we have a tech now. I can talk more about that if you want, what type of unions. But they actually, when you have PhD, you get a really nice discount. Uh, as for membership, you pay really little, but you really gain a lot of benefits. First three years PhD in Norway, uh, your employee have to increase your salary. And then this union, they will negotiate for you 
this increase in salary to get it as high as possible. So I think that on the last year of my PhD, it was one of the best increase in my salary. It was plus 30,000 kroners in a salary for the next year. So, and I was paying, uh, I think about 1,000 a year for membership. So they saved me those money and I gained much more. So that's why I'm uh, just letting you know and I hope that is useful for you. And if you want to know more details, just ask me in the comment section. Thank you for watching until the end. I hope you find it interesting. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and see you soon. Bye.